I have to warn you that today's subject is not particularly cheerful, but I do believe it's one that we should be thinking about, and especially as we enter into an election season, and even more critically as far as being Christians. How do we handle it when people lie to us? I think America has a problem with lying, and I imagine you would agree with that. But with that problem with lying runs to the deepest level. And there are so many things that are going on right now that it appears that there are different people in positions of authority who are participating in propagating these lies. And so what do we do about it? Do we just accept it? Do we, do we think that it's just business as usual for us? Do we think that it, there's nothing we can do about it? And so we just put up with it. Well, today I want to look at four specific instances of where people in positions of authority are lying to us. And then I want to talk about, after we've looked at the consequences for these things, I want to talk about what we can do about it and how we should view it, again, especially as Christians. And the four areas that I wanted to look at have varying degrees of consequences for them. I'll start with the least serious. Just want to use these as, as examples. And all of these things are things that our government has recently been involved with that pretty much are undeniable. They're lies they've got caught in, but they seem to just kind of double down with them and never admit that they've told a lie. Or if they do, they try to give the impression that it's for our own good. Uh, the first, the least consequential, but one with heavy consequences, is in the area of the way that they report inflation. Our government will tell us that inflation is running lower than it really is. They'll go to the point where they'll, instead of comparing a basket of goods that remains uh, consistent from year to year, where you're, you're comparing eggs to eggs and apples to apples and cars to cars and whatever the, set, the top or the... Uh, uh, component of the inflation index is, well, will they change it up? Last year it may have been steak, but this year's steak may be too high, and so they'll replace it with chicken. And they'll, the reasons that they'll use is, well, people will substitute chicken for steak when it's cheaper, and that may be true enough, especially if we can no longer afford to eat steak, but it doesn't show an accurate representation of inflation. Chicken was cheaper than steak last year, and it's, it's cheaper this year. It skews the overall results. And so they take the inflation uh, rate and they use it for all sorts of things, such as making Social Security payments and other types of, uh, of, of uh, payments that they're obligated to do. And instead of giving an accurate increase in these things, well, they've lied about them. They think they're, they're doing something that's good, they're saving money, but it's having consequences on the people that they're lying to. Uh, the second area is one that I believe we see the consequences more and more from, and that's the way that, that our borders have been opened up. Uh, I, I don't know how many times of late I've heard uh, people who have at one point just a few months or a few years ago bragged about opening the borders who are saying that they've done more to keep the borders tight than anybody else. And yet we have more and more people who have been brought in or who have been allowed to come in who are committing all sorts of crimes. They're, they're, they're taking a toll on our nation. And, and yet those who have been allowing it to happen and then trying to cover it up, um, even though their lies will convince some people it, it does not change the problem. And, and this brings in another area, and that is with what the media is doing to support whoever their guy or whoever their girl is uh, when it comes to positions of power. Very often they'll go ahead and they'll propagate a lie even though they know it is a lie because there are other things about that political candidate that they like. And so it becomes a game of the end justifies the means. And there's other things that are involved with it as well. There's a position of keeping your power uh, or keeping, keeping your ability to remain a, a popular newscaster, whatever it is, without having uh, to be um, uh, persecuted by the government. Uh, it hasn't been uh, all that long since a popular 
uh, newscaster for, for Fox News was exposing some things that had happened by our own government uh, during the last election. Well, Senator Schumer got up on the Senate floor and he told Fox that if they were wise, they would fire this man. And sure enough, they fired him a couple of weeks later. It's kind of unsafe to point out when our government is lying when you are the media. And a lot of them have learned that lesson. Uh, a third example of this is what happened with, with the virus that went around a few years ago. Do you remember that the one that was put in charge of, of handling the way that we, uh, we reacted to this virus told everybody not to go out and buy, buy masks because masks didn't do any good? And then a few weeks later, maybe a, maybe a month or two later, he came out and he said, well, you really need to wear masks. And, and uh, if you don't, you need to pay a penalty for that. And when questioned about that, why did he lie about it in the first place? He said, well, I was afraid that people would rush out and take the masks that were needed in the medical field. And a lot of people just accepted that. But, but think about it. When you've got somebody that's in an important position lying about little things because they don't think you can handle the truth, what else are they lying about? Well, as it came about, as it turned out in this case, the man who was put in charge of handling this, the disease was one of the very uh, group of individuals who had come up with the disease in the first place, who had helped not only fund uh, the, uh, the research on this disease, but once it got out, covered it up. And even though he was caught doing that, Congress did nothing. They threatened him, but they did nothing. And so... Here we have another instance where, where people in positions of power lie to us and they have very heavy consequences. Just think about how that upended the whole world a few years ago. And then more recently, uh, in the last uh, three or four years, we've had a, a president who has dementia or some other uh, disease that is incapacitating him mentally. And, and the, the government has covered this up. The media, to a large extent, has covered this up, said he was just as sharp as a tack. And then all of a sudden, they came to the conclusion, oh, maybe he's not, maybe we should replace him. And, and so, well, he hadn't been replaced as far as his position of authority now. The question becomes, what is going on when you have a man who is demented, who is the leader of the most important country in the free world. Who's running the country and what are they doing? Why are they covering that up? Well, we see when people lie that these lies have consequences for us. Sometimes they're hidden and don't reveal themselves for a number of years, but they have consequences. And now the question becomes, well, how do we react to it? Do we just put up with it? And especially if you're a Christian, how are you to react to it? One of the things I really enjoy about the Bible is how practical it is. In the 101st Psalm, we, we read of King David. He was obviously in a position of power. What did he do about liars within uh, his group of officials? In, in the uh, 101st Psalm, in verse 6, this is what he says. My eyes will be on the faithful in the land that they may dwell in me. He whose walk is blameless will minister to me. So the people that David sought to be his officials to help rule the land of Israel, they had to be faithful, they had to be righteous, but what if they weren't? In verse 7, he said, No one who practices deceit will dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. It was so serious to David because it was so serious to God that he wouldn't even allow a liar or a deceiver to serve under him. Why not? Because he knew that it would be detrimental to those that they served, those that they were ruling over. And so David would not permit it, didn't even allow him to be around him. Now, how about us today in, in our world today? What if we do just kind of put up with it? We think, well, there's nothing you can really do about it. All politicians lie. I guess we'll just hold our nose and vote and we'll take 
uh, we'll take the, the one that we like the best that promises us the most goodies. There are some lies we like to hear about, aren't there? What happens if we just go along with the lie? In the 21st proverb, in verse uh, 28, it says this, A false witness, that's a liar, a false witness will perish. It's also those who report on what liars say as if they're the truth. A false witness will perish. Well, there comes a point where God's not going to put up with it anymore. But how about those who they lie to? Well, it goes on to say, after it says a false witness will perish, it says whoever listens to him will be destroyed forever. Well, now this has particular application in the religious world. There's a lot of people who seek out uh, religious authorities who will tell them what they want to hear. And even though they know that it conflicts with what the Word of God says, well, they'll go along with them uh, because that's what they want to be doing. There are certain religious authorities that will tell you that sin isn't sin. There are some uh, people who believe with all of their heart that, that right is wrong and wrong is right. What if you listen to them? What if you don't compare what they're saying to the Word of God so that you can get the absolute truth? Well, this says, he who listens to a false witness will perish forever. It doesn't have to be a false witness who intends to lie. It's just talking about a liar or a false witness, somebody who's teaching the wrong thing. In religion, it could be something uh, along the lines of what it takes to be saved. It could be something along the lines of what we've already mentioned, of whether uh, something is a sin or not. And, and people can buy into the lie, they can accept the lie, and it has tremendous consequences. Some of those consequences may not even show up until Judgment Day. Is that fair? Well, from God's perspective, it's entirely fair. He gives us the truth in His Word, and He expects us to seek it out. Now let's talk about it for something that's not quite as consequential, but still has tremendous ramifications for us in the world we live today. And it, it's, it goes back to the question that we started this off with. What happens when you just take for granted that your uh, political leaders will lie to you? That the news media will lie to you? What happens when you just put up with it? Well, the consequences can be pretty drastic, can't they? They can range from a retired couple who's worked hard all their life not having enough to pay the bills, to uh, having to, to deal with people who have come into the nation illegally, who, who are committing all sorts of terrible crimes. It can also involve getting a disease that should have never even occurred in the first place, that sometimes is fatal. Or it can involve having a leader who is not really in charge, but they say he's in charge. And, and not knowing who is making the decisions or what decisions they're making or what the consequences for those decisions will be. You see, when we put up with liars, there's all sorts of variables and so all sorts of uncertainties that, that you, just, you just have to deal with. It's kind of like somebody putting a bunch of landmines out and, and you're never knowing if the next step's going to blow you up or not. When you're dealing with people who tell the truth, you don't have that. You, you, what you see really is what you get. And, and if there are hard decisions they make, at least they're honest with you. They treat you as an adult so you can make your own decision. But when people are lying to you about some of the most important things in your life, and in the lives of your parents and grandparents, or in the lives of your children. Well, we need to take that serious. We don't just need to put up with it and accept it as, as, as just a, a fact of life. We need to do something about it so the innocent don't suffer. And when it comes to the very uh, big picture, when it comes to our eternity and the way that we live before God, well, we need to be seeking out His truth because the truth is something that's readily available and you can readily identify it if you know the truth. Somebody one time said that 
It's harder to believe a truth you've only heard once than it is to, to believe a lie you've heard a million times. So if, you, if you're not reading the Bible, if you're not reading the Word of Truth, you, you better get to it. And as far as some of these other things, if you know that you've got leaders that are lying to you, you need to stop voting for them. You need to start demanding that something be done about that. If you've been listening to, to newscasts uh, where you know the people who are giving the news are lying to you, turn it off and start using your own mind so that you can figure out what's going on and then do something about it. If a nation is built on lies, eventually that nation's going to crumble, just as if your faith is built on lies, eventually that faith will crumble. We can restore goodness and decency and what is right to our nation and to our religious lives. But it's going to have to start with us stopping putting up with liars, with known liars, and then being able to live our lives with having all the facts in front of us, all the truth in front of us, and then doing the best we can with that. Well, that's it for today. I realize it wasn't very cheerful, but I think it's something that's really important. I think it's something we need to be thinking about, not only during this election season that, that we're in right now, but in our entire lives. There's a great, this principle that we read, a false witness will perish and whoever listens to him will be destroyed forever, is something that really is accurate. And because that's true, we need to make sure that we're not putting up with liars, but that we're trying to seek the truth in every part of our lives. Thanks for listening today. If this is something that helps, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. There will be more like it. Uh, like the video. It'll help it get out to more people and share it if there's somebody that you think might benefit from it. But for now, I appreciate your tuning in and hope we'll see you tomorrow.